Warriors, I'm Guinea, and here with me is Sonia. Welcome to the 34th edition of the Whittier Morning Tea. We're here to bring you the latest news from DC's very own Whittier Elementary School. You're watching Channel 9 News, where we spill the tea and the news is always piping, piping hot, hot and real. <laughs> And now for our breaking news story. Morning, Video Wars. I'm Max, and here with me is Evan. It's your favorite anchors here, ready to talk to you about better hearing and speech month. And let's be real, we can all use a little better hearing after the year we've had with masks on, masks muffling our communication. So what exactly is Better Hearing and Speech Month? Well, it's a wonderful time where we celebrate the importance of something we often take for granted, communication. For speaking to hearing, these are crucial elements that allow us to connect and understand the world around us. And let's be honest, we all love some good chit-chat whether it's gossiping with your friends or telling corny dad jokes to your family, we all love to talk. But it's, but it's important to remember that not, not everyone is, has the same ability to communicate, which is why this month is so important. Here, here at Whittier Elementary, we want to raise awareness about the importance of communication and help those who may struggle with it. So let's all take a moment to appreciate our ability to speak and listen and use it to connect with those around us. Thanks for tuning in, folks. And remember, if you ever need a good listener, just give your favorite anchors a call we've we've got ears that are always ready for a good story and now let's go on vacation with amina and then and then Alyssa for an amazing interview with miss washington and miss williams i'm max and and i'm evan signing off welcome back to the winter running tea i'm amina today we have two very special guests with us miss washington and miss williams the school speech pathologist at Whittier Elementary School. Welcome, Ms. Williams. Can you start by explaining the significance of Better Hearing and Speech Month and why it's important to, to raise awareness about the communication disorders? Sure. Um, so first I want to back up and I want to talk about what a speech language pathologist is. Uh, it, we are people who have been trained to work with people who send and receive messages within communication systems differently. So this could be people who um, produce speech sounds a little differently. They might use different language skills, not really speaking a different language, but how you understand it and um, how you use it, it might be different. Um, we are also within this month talking about hearing, so I want to also bring up what an audiologist is. An audiologist is a person who works with the ears and all of the jobs that the ears perform. That was a question that you had last week, and the answer was um, hearing and balance. Um, so they'll work with people around those job functions with the ear. Why this is important is um, people who communicate differently have many challenges that they face, and so we want to just raise awareness around that. Um, I have, through my training, learned how important it is to respect the different ways that we communicate um, because they're all equal, they all are important, and so through education, we want people to have that same respect. Thank you. That was an amazing response. Miss Washington, as a speech pathologist, what are some of the most common hearing and speech difficulties you encounter in children and how do these challenges impact their learning and social interaction okay good question all right so when you're uh, talking about children and how children learn uh, when you were a baby 
the first thing you do is you begin to babble. So some of the sounds that you make um, come out just fine if you're hearing well, but sometimes those sounds don't come out so well. So we are so in a public school, we hear a lot of early developing sound errors. Some of the most common ones, S, R, and L. Those are common errors that we often hear. Common language errors that we have are when kids, children can um, hear, but they're not really understanding what they hear. So we call that a processing difficulty. And formulating a sentence is often very difficult for children as they're learning. But one of the most common hearing problems that we notice is that in our area, we have kids with lots of allergies and asthma. And because of that, it causes a lot of fluid in your ears. So when you have fluid in your ears, it hurts and it often muffles the way you uh, hear sounds. So those are some of the most common. Well, thank you for your response. That is an amazing response, and thank you for it. Okay. Whittier Elementary School is observing Better Hearing and Speech Month. Could you share any specific activities or events that are planned to promote awareness and understanding of communication disorders? Yeah, so we had the idea of providing information to the Whittier school system, and we wanted to make it really fun. So we thought, hey, trivia and prizes. Um, it felt very successful this year. We asked questions to staff and students, um, and I feel, I think we both agree that we feel very uh, appreciative to be part of such a community that is very helping and warm and really makes a lot of effort to include everyone. Um, and so we fit right in doing this this year. Wow, thank you. Not only is it not only is it fun, other students they are learning by these fun activities. Early detection and intervention are crucial when it comes to addressing hearing and speech difficulties in children. How do you collaborate with teachers, parents, and other professionals to ensure that these students receive their support that they need, Ms. Washington? <laughs> okay, so many of you probably started here when you were in preschool. And so your parents' first important person in your life next to their pediatrician is their teacher. So often the teacher is the first line of defense. They hear their parents' concerns, they hear there's new students, and they share that with a team. And Whittier and most uh, elementary schools have a team of providers, from speech pathologists to physical therapists to occupational therapists and special ed teachers. So we all come together and listen and watch and learn about all the different ways that some of our students communicate. And from there, we are able to move forward and either test our students or say, just give them a little extra time. Wow. Okay. I just learned a bunch of new stuff that you and the special ed teacher and speed pathologist work together. Yes. Thank you so much for coming here today and letting me interview you guys. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to pass it on to my co-anchor, Alyssa. Well, she asked some follow-up questions. Hi, I'm Alyssa, and I will continue our interview. Technology continues to advance and play a significant role in various fields. How has technology impacted the field of speech pathology? And what innovation tools or techniques do you utilize to enhance the learning experience for your students? Um, yeah, so most importantly, uh, technology has allowed many people and many of our students here at Whittier a way to communicate. It's given them a voice um, when they may not necessarily have one naturally. Um, so through assistive technology, uh, students are able to use things like pictures, symbols, or even customized tablets um, to help them learn and share their ideas in the classroom. Um, and also outside of the classroom. There's also features on our everyday devices like text to talk for those who may not be as strong with spelling. Um, there's also 
things that uh, like websites that will read books aloud to you um, to make literacy something that's open for all. And um, there are also built in programs that will read things that you look up on the internet and like as you were looking it up. So um, technology has become really, really great and really, really helpful. Um, but that's just within speech, within audiology as well. Shout out to the audiologist. Um, it is also equally fascinating. Um, and within their field, you'd be astounded with how sleek and how well blended some of the current hearing devices are. Um, and the cool things they can do, like syncing up through Bluetooth to cell phones. Wow, that is a great way to help people with speech difficulties. Could you share a success story or a notable achievement from your work as a speech pathologist? How have you witnessed the, posi the, po the positive transformation and progress of a student who struggled with their hearing or speech? Ms. Washington. That's a good question. So I've been around a long time doing speech pathology. So I've seen a lot of, a lot of children in my experience. But there's one in particular that I worked with back, gosh, I have to say about 19 years ago because that's how old she is. Um, she was born with multiple difficulties, one being difficulties with hearing and with communication. But she worked super, super hard. And I worked with her when she was probably between three to six years of age. From there, she moved on to different schools, all throughout DC public schools, and had wonderful therapists all the way through. And I kept up with her because her mother also started working for DC Public Schools. So by last year, she had finished going to high school here and she got into college and she has had one successful year and has been asked to come back. So to see that students who start off with very significant difficulties with intervention can be as successful as anyone who hasn't had. That is so amazing how people with speech difficulties and other hearing or speech problems can achieve many accomplishments as they grow up. Parents often play a critical role in supporting children with complication disorders. What advice do you have for parents who suspect that their child may have a speech or hearing difficulty? Um, just Honing back into what Mrs. Washington spoke to earlier. Um, so don't wait. Um, if you have suspicions uh, or concerns, follow up with that as immediately as you can because early intervention uh, has a lot of research behind it with how successful students can be um, at really young ages before even coming to school. Kids have soaked up so much from their their lives and the worlds, and so we want to um, take advantage of that uh, because their brains are so powerful at really young ages. Um, so don't wait. Talk to the teacher if you do have a student in school, uh, and also the pediatrician is a really strong person that you can talk to, but also be firm if you're a parent um, because you know your child really well. Wow, that was a really amazing Response. Finally, Ms. Washington, what would you like to community and our viewers to know about the importance of better hearing and speech? Well, whenever May rolls around, it would be nice if we continue to do things like this, that people will take a time to just pause and think about what, how important it is to be able to communicate. You are in a rich environment here, which students who speak different languages, you have students who have different learning styles and different levels of ability to hear. Use this as a uh, time to embrace it, bring them in to the fold, make them feel included, learn from them. Everybody has something important to say, and we all want everybody to hear what we have to say as well. So checking that hearing is also something to have as one annual reminder. Wow. Thank you for that response. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ms. Washington and Ms. Williams. Your dedication and experience in helping children overcome communication challenges are truly amazing. We appreciate your time and valuable insights. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. 
That's all the news we have for today. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition of the Whittier Morning Tea, where we spill the tea and the news is always piping hot and real. I'm Guinea and I'm Sonia. Signing off. Have a peaceful and productive day and do, and do it the Whittier Warrior way. way. And remember, if, if trouble finds you, find an heiress adult. If, if trouble finds you, find an heiress adult. Thank you. Thank you.